Hey guys, it's Ann. Welcome to the channel. And today, what I'm going to show you is one of my cocoon nurseries. So this goes beyond me just leaving castings sit. This is actually where I'm going to put the cocoons once I sift them out. I did have a request for you guys to see, you know, me sifting out my cocoons. And so that's what this video is. I'm going to show you how I get the cocoons out of my uh, castings. So I'm going to give the the cocoon nursery a little bit of melon and then I am going to get my tray and I'm going to get my small screen which is one twelfth of an inch or one eighth of an inch I can't remember but very tiny only a couple millimeters and then I'm going to show you what I do. Alright so I've let these dry out quite quite a bit and uh, much more so than I normally would, but it'll go through the smaller screen much better if it's dry. And then I can always rehydrate them for, for later. Okay, here's my normal screen. This is the one quarter inch that I, this stuff has already been screened through once. And it took out all of the large material. And now what we're going to do is we're going to screen through this one, which is the next size smaller. If you're interested in getting screens like this, I do uh, have links below in my Amazon affiliate uh, comment that I have pinned to the top. So if you're interested in, in getting these, it doesn't cost you anything more. But if you go through my link, the channel does get, I think, a 3 or 4% commission, depending on what kind of stuff you purchase. All right. So I'm not going to, you know, keep this separately I am just going to sift back into my own pan here and then we're going to look and see if we get anything. I'm not seeing uh, much of anything off the top of my head but everything that stays on top of the screen is going into the cocoon nursery. So I'm just going to try and you know maybe sift over to one end and then we can look and see if we find any. Now as dried out as these castings are, um, they may have shriveled up a little bit, but as soon as the moisture is ideal for them, then they will come back to life. Yeah, when the castings are kind of wet, they're easier to see, but you can't sift them, so it's kind of a a catch-22. When you can see them really well, you can't sift them, and when you can sift them, you can't see them. So I can see a little cocoon here and here, so I know that I am catching them. There's another one right there and there and there. And these are pretty close to being done because they're a very dark color. Okay, looking again. I see a few. I don't see a bunch. I don't always do this. Uh, this is just a request for somebody that wanted to know how you could increase your, your population of cocoons, or your population of worms, by rescuing the cocoons from the castings. And this is one way to do it. And then what you're left with is like some super, super fine castings. Which I don't normally do all the time because I do get almost 2,000 pounds US or a metric ton of castings per calendar year. So we're going to file that under Ann doesn't have time to do that to every batch of castings. But uh, after they had a problem in 2021, we had a critter in the basement that was eating worms. I have been doing this a little bit so that I can try and grow them. And I'm not really sure why I'm growing them because at this point I don't plan on selling. But I do give away bins during uh, Earth Day week. And there's cocoons here. I will try and zoom in on that right there. You can also see a super tiny snail. Not cool. All right, there's another cocoon right there. 
So of course I am taking some castings with me, but that's okay. So yeah, I'm probably getting 20 or 30 cocoons in each one of my pan siftings here. So this is a, a mortar tray full of castings that I harvested from blue a week or so ago. Let them dry out and then come in and sift. So there's cocoons there, there. Another one there. But cocoons can stay dormant. Uh, according to the textbooks I've been reading, they can stay dormant for almost a year if they're in un, you know, unfriendly conditions. So uh, part of me is like, oh, geez, if I let them dry out too much, maybe they'll you know, desiccate, and then I won't be able to recover them. But according to the books, they will actually just kind of go dormant. So I feel a little better about it. Uh, but I probably will go ahead and rehydrate these castings without the cocoons when I'm done here. So you can see I'm only getting probably 50% castings. Now this small of a screen will, will catch the castings. I mean, some of the blue worm cocoons are so small, even this won't catch them. But the next screen down is so small that, you know, basically nothing goes through unless you're using water as an assist. So, yeah, I'm definitely getting some cocoons here. So you'll do about one more and show you what I've got. And then usually, I mean, this is going to take probably 30, 60, 90 days to see any worms at all because they were dried out. Um, they've kind of gone a little dormant and I don't think they pop right back, you know, automatically. I think they take a while and have to stay in that nice moisture for a while before they'll come back. So it might be three, six months before I get a crop of, of worms out of this that I can pick out. I mean, there might be some to begin with, you know, in a month or two, but, you know, to be able to get full-size worms out of these cocoons, because they've been allowed to dry, it could take you know, three months, four months to be able to get worms I can see and pick out. So I think that's a good starter amount for this bin. I will just mix up the moisture and you can tell there's quite a bit of moisture in here. Maybe give them the liquid off of the, uh, the melon there. And then I keep the lid on this firmly. Um, these are not, you know, these cocoons aren't breathing. These were my original bins that I kept my worm cocoons in. But I keep this nice and closed so that there is, you know, no moisture loss except for maybe through this holes. There's, you know, some air can come and go. But it stays nice and moist in here. And we'll check back in on this in about a month and see if we've got anything. Okay, so we will start a playlist for this for the Cocoon Nursery. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.